During our Community Commonwealth Series here on Say the Water, we're delving into phenomenal foundations and nonprofits that are doing marvelous things, phenomenal things here in the community, from individuals in business and politics from the community that are making a difference. It's Stay the Water. I'm your host, Dr. Eric Laville. Stay tuned as we bring back the founders of the Donovan Wayne Lynch Foundation. Welcome back. It's Say the Water. I'm your host, Dr. Eric Clavell. We want to thank you, as always, for joining us here on this beautiful Sunday, as you always do, at 10 a.m. as we broadcast live from the campus of the Norfolk State University on WNSB 91.1, the soul of VA, here in the great city of Norfolk in the phenomenal Commonwealth of Virginia. Listen, we can't do what we do without our producer here in the studio, DJ Scandalous, also known as Marvin Folks, that always keeps us right and tight. We appreciate him for what he always does. And listen, once again, I've got to give a shout out to our Spartan alumni, the Spartan Nation. Listen, without you, we couldn't do what we do. Thank you for your support. And once again, we're in two full weeks of school. We've got new Spartans new, get, get, getting ready to start their future. And just like we see here in our motto for this university, it says, we see the future in you. And that's exactly what they're doing. They're starting their future here. And, you know, as we have delved into our Community Commonwealth series, we've talked with individuals from business, from politics, from sports, from industry, from corporate, from the community that say, you know what, I've been given so much. A lot of them so much from NSU, Norfolk State University, and others, they've been given so much throughout their lives. They said, listen, I want to give back. So we've been uh, uh, discovering and talking with individuals out in the community business and so forth about their nonprofits and foundation. Listen, I've been extremely excited about those conversations, you know, but the other thing is a lot of some foundations and nonprofits are started not so much because the, the their lives were given so much, but some things were taken away from their lives. You know, we call it having triumph out of tragedy and joining us today. We're highlighting one of those such foundations that decided to turn tragedy into triumph. We have with us Mr. Tim Lynch, who's one of the founders of the Donovan Wayne Lynch Foundation. Mr. Lynch, thank you so much for joining us here on State of Water. It's such an honor to be here with you, Dr. Clavial, and hello to uh, NSU Nation. Absolutely. You know, your brother, uh, Wayne Lynch, he's a who's a father of Donovan, and you'll tell us more about that relationship, but he's a proud Spartan graduate of NSU. Absolutely. Played on the basketball team. Uh, he got injured, but uh, he loved it. Blue, you know, green and and, uh, and uh, green and gold all the way. I also have a brother-in-law, a sister, <laughs> and you name that, a whole bunch of Spartans <laughs> in my family. I, I, I didn't, I didn't take that route, but but you know, uh, <laughs> I came out of Arizona State, but uh, it was just an opportunity to present himself for me at that time. But my family bleeds uh, the green and gold. Hey, like, behold the green and go. So, listen, we will adopt you as an honorary Spartan because all your family <laughs> are Spartans. How about that? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> it's all good. So, you know, as I was telling the audience uh, previously, I said, listen, you know, during our community com- conversation series, we've been talking with founders of foundations and nonprofits that are doing great work. Uh, and we've talked with individuals who have played professional sports, those in politics, those in business, those who are educators. And and, and we have a list of others that are that we're going to talk with during this month. But, you know, I, I mentioned that there are some foundations that were created not because something was given to them, but rather something was taken away. You know, tell Mr. Lynch, tell us uh, a little bit about the Donovan Wayne Lynch Foundation and why was it created? 
Sure, absolutely. Uh, as many of your audience probably know, but many may not know, that in March of uh, 26 of 2021, uh, Donovan uh, Wayne Lynch, uh, my nephew, uh, my, my, my brother's son, uh, was uh, killed in Virginia Beach, Virginia, tragically, unexpectedly, um, by uh, just a chaos that erupted into Virginia Beach. Uh, he was uh, didn't even uh, didn't even know that the chaos had taken place. Uh, he and his buddy was just hanging out as you know people do, and walked out of the restaurant and uh, walked into this chaos and was mistaken by the police as one of the people, one of the culprits involved in the mayhem. And, uh, and and he shot, and the police officer shot him and, and killed him. And so it was, to say the least, uh, absolutely devastating to us because Donovan uh, was magnanimous. Mm. I mean, he was an awesome kid, brother. Um, you know, I mean, I love this guy, man. Um, Donovan played football at, um, at uh, Norfolk Christian. Mm-hmm. He went on to uh, play in the JUCO League in San Francisco, won a championship there, got a scholarship to go to University of Virginia and Wise to finish out his career. He graduated uh, with the BA in, uh, in sports management. Uh, he was just just getting his stride, to be honest with you. And, and I'm not using hyperbole. I worked a lot for decades with young people, leadership development, things of that nature. And Donovan was one of them kids. He was just one of them <laughs> kids. You just could not, you know, you just could not wait to be in his presence. You know, every time you see him, you just light up because he just he just had this aura about him that he knew how to navigate his way through life with respect and honor. And, and it was just a joy. So it was really, really devastating for this to happen to him. Um, but he was um, very uh, astute to social issues. Yeah. And we, he, his father and I uh, worked on something in the water because uh, uh, Donovan's second cousin is Pharrell Williams. That's right. And That's so right. we have a good relationship. Yeah, we have a good relationship with Pharrell and the family because they're family. You know, they both share the same grandfather, I believe. And so um, we were doing something in the water, and Donovan was right there volunteering. He loved to serve the community. And uh, he was working on a project uh, because at the time, you know, George Floyd uh, incident had happened, the tragedy behind George Floyd. My nephew said to me, he said, Unc, I, you know, I just finished uh, school. I'm ready to take on the world, but I just don't want to be successful. He said, I want to change the world because what goes on with George Floyd and things like that in our community are too much. It's too rapid. It's something has to change. And so we, we engaged in a project called Reimagine America. Mm. And it's geared around just, just asking people to not just focus on the problem. But let's imagine better communities and put a plan in place to implement them. And so that's where we are today. We wanted to start a foundation to sort of capture Donovan's spirit and finish the work that we started with him. Absolutely. You know, you know, as 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 I was listening to you talk and and we'll talk more about, you know, reimagine America and Donovan's Law. We'll delve a little bit more into that. But, you know, you know, we've had a chance to meet and talk and we work together. Uh, I was fortunate enough to work with you on Reimagine America uh, for this project. And it was a phenomenal event uh, held here at Norfolk State University. Uh, the foundation that 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 you you guys chose uh, NSU to hold it, and it just really really moved uh, a lot of people. And and again, getting to know you, uh, your brother, and <laughs> the other family, you know, it's it's you guys just light up. You guys just light up when you start to talk about Donovan. <laughs> so you yeah. know you know listen to the audience. I've witnessed it. You know this brother, th- th- this good brother here, Tim, and 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 his brother Wayne. You know, when they start talking about Donovan, it just it just does something to them. They smile from ear to ear, and uh, and, and Tim, yeah. that that's a special person, right? Yes, yes, that's who he was for sure. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Now, 
And many people now, of course, we know that there was a legal case, uh, you know, filed on this and things were ongoing, you know, but outside of that, and we know the tragedy of losing anybody, first of all, you know, we're all, we all, we know we're all born into this life and we're going to leave it uh, one day, but you hate for someone to leave before their time and you hate for someone to leave through a, a tragedy. And, 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 and your family decided to take this tragedy and turn it into triumph. Tell us what was the, 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 the thinking, like in the middle of, of what was going on, because it, it was heavy. It was heavy. In the middle of what was going on, how did you guys pull together to say, hey, we've got to do this? It was to sort of uh, stay connected with his spirit in the sense of the giving spirit that he had, uh, serving spirit that he had. And so we said, if we start a foundation in his name that represents the spirit of what he was doing, we can always kind of stay in touch with him. And so that's why we started the Donovan Wayne Lynch Foundation. And it is around empowering other people. We're looking to raise money for scholarships, for entrepreneurs, just just giving. That's, and, and that would just make our hearts feel so good and satisfied that we have an organization that is emblematic of Donovan's spirit, a spirit of service, a spirit of giving, a spirit of love. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I'm looking at it, and, and you guys who are listening to us on the radio, you can go to dwlfoundation.org. That's dwlfoundation.org. That stands for Donovan Wayne Lynch Foundation. And, you know, when you go to it, you'll see this phenomenal image that says, for social and economic justice, you know, and it talks about the passion to inspire others. You know, here where it says Donovan, he joined forces with his father and his uncle to bring social and economic justice to communities and cities around the country. Tim, why is it why why is it important to bring both social and economic justice to our communities? Yeah, that's a very important question, Dr. Cozell. Um, our ecosystem is out of whack. And when I say our ecosystem, I'm talking about our social ecosystem. We are all in this together. Uh, as I stated earlier, Donovan was at the other end of the waterfront when this mayhem broke out on the waterfront. And mm-hmm. the genesis of this mayhem was some young men, from what I understand, the articles I read and the arrests that were made, they just had a general beef, as they say. And they just pulled out their guns and they start firing in the midst of a crowded beach spot. You know, just started shooting. And they killed an innocent girl right there. Uh, I, I apologize. I don't, her name escapes me right now, but she was focused. She had a future. She was doing great things and her life was just gone. You know, she didn't have any idea that any of this was taking place. And then it goes down to the other end of the beach because the police have, you know, you're understandable. Police don't know who these guys are. They're at loose. So they lock down the entire beachfront. And so my nephew didn't even have any idea this was going on, walked out into the middle of chaos. And his life is taken. And so when I say the ecosystem is that we have to get to the root problem of why we have these inherent problems that are germane to African-American communities. Because our innocent sons and daughters that we work hard to raise are being sucked into this man. And therefore, we're dealing with not only holding people accountable, like police who may be rogue and step out of the bounds or do things that are not proper within the guidelines and holding them accountable with the social um, and even economics. Well, we have to look at the totality of our ecosystem and go in and fix the problems that are triggering these bad habits that are causing our kids their lives. Mm. Absolutely. Look, I, I, I hear the passion in your voice. And, and you're talking about DeShayla Harris. DeShayla Harris, also known as Shay Harris. She was yeah. unfortunately struck by that stray bullet uh, that same night. So like you said, two 
unfortunate lives were taken. Listen, it's Stay the One. I'm your host, Dr. Eric Clavel, here doing our Community Conversation Series. We're continuing our conversation with foundations and nonprofits here in the 757 and the Commonwealth of Virginia that are making an impact and starting movements here across their community and the country. Joining us here, we're highlighting uh, the Donovan Wayne Lynch Foundation. And we have with us his uncle, Tim Lynch, who's fa- and uh, Donovan's father, Wayne Lynch, who is also so an NSU alum uh, here. You know, we're talking about foundations that were pretty much started from tragedy out of triumph. And, and, and Tim, you know, when you talk about, you know, these specific instances that impacted your lives, you know, your lives, you know, Donna was taken from you. Uh, DeShayla, she was taken from, from their, their family. You know, it has a reverberating effect throughout the community because he just wasn't a son or an uncle, but he was a friend. You know, to, to a lot of people, you know, and he was a contributor, you know, to the community as well. You know, you know, you know, what is the impact from 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 your viewpoint if we if we don't change this, this this tragic taking away and sucking away of our 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 children lives that we work so hard to raise? That's a very good question, Dr. Cavell. And I think the question can be answered with living in fear living in pure fear that uh, no matter how hard we work in loving and caring and training our kids, and no matter how hard our kids grasp the opportunities to prepare themselves for a future, if we don't fix this this broken uh, system, uh, and what I mean system, let's just talk about the ecosystem that among our culture, if we don't fix that, then, you know, we're going to be living in fear. Uh, and, and it shouldn't be, we shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't be that way. I think fear is is what we're going to be dealing with. Absolutely. And you know what? One of the ways to fix that is let's the Reimagine America uh, Symposium and Forum that you hosted last year. And and it's coming up again this year. Yes. (laughs) As, As a matter of fact, it's going to be held here again at Norfolk State University on Saturday, on Saturday, September 10th. You can register for it and be a part of it. Simply go to dwlfoundation.org, dwlfoundation.org, register, come to it. Wayne, I mean, Tim, tell us a little bit about the concept around Reimagine America, and then we'll get into the program and what's going to happen this Saturday. Okay. Yeah, the Reimagine America is is basically built on the premise that our imagination is the most powerful force in the earth today. And that every community, every city, every country is actually a collection of the imagination of the people. And when those systems in which we have imagined are no longer uh, really serving out the desires of the people, we believe it is the people's responsibility to then come back to the table and reimagine a better community, a better system to serve their needs. And so it, uh, uh, imagine a uh, reimagined community starts with dialogue from diverse groups within the community. It's critical that you hear from everyone, even those that you are diametrically opposed to. You have to hear their truth. You have to hear their story. And you have to be able to listen without prejudice and assumption to come away with what is true about what they're saying. And the end result of that is that if we can come together and work on something that is coherent, meaning that it's logical, and that it is sustainable, and we can build on it together, then we have breakthrough. Then we can solve problems because we can't solve the problems in silos, meaning that my faction, we have it right, your faction has it wrong. And until your faction yields to my faction, we will never have a solution. And so that has to be done away with. It's revolutionary type of thinking, but it requires a mature people to engage in this type of dialogue. And that's why we're bringing it to NSU, because it is the the, the spirit of the of the young folk. <laughs> so old on the young folk. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, oh yeah, say look, young young people, young folk. You're exactly right. 
but they will be more inclined to grasp these new concepts mm. in the hopes of building a better future. You know, so we are asking them to come to the table and try to be a different thing. Let's listen. Without prejudice, that don't mean I have to agree with you. Right. That means I'm going to hear your truth. And I have questions about why you hold that truth. And then you have to be able to make your clear, articulate reason why you hold that truth. And mm. then you make me understand it. And I say, okay, that's logical. Mm. And it's something that we can actually go forward with together. Wow. Now we have breakthrough. Mm. Reimagine America, a dialogue about policing, economics, and politics. Let's talk about it. Uh, part of the HBCU tour is Your Voice Matters held here, and the inaugural was actually held here at Norfolk State uh, in 2021, and the follow-up is going to be held here again this September 10th, Saturday, here on campus from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. You can go to wdwlfoundation.org and register. You know, when you talk about changing, changing the narrative, you know, one thing about it that, that you mentioned, it kind of stuck, stuck in my mind. You said, I don't have to agree with you, but we got to talk about it. Yeah. You know, I, I think a lot of a lot of people can can agree that I think what's missing in our society today is civil discourse. <laughs> you know, we hear we hear a lot about road rage and incidents and, you know, people just basically taking the law in their own hands. But when you talk about civil discourse, you know, that's that's something where you could just sit down, I can hear your thoughts, I can hear your beliefs, I can respect it, may not agree with it, but we can come together and come out and say, hey, let's work together to solve this problem for a better day. Tim, what are some of the things that you're looking at and, and what are some of the panels that we have for this year that you're looking to uh, really have a conversation about, a civil discourse, and, and in order to work toward change? Awesome, awesome. Yeah, so what we are doing with this, with this session is that, and thank you for being the moderator, uh, Dr. Clavel, uh, of the thought panel. Thank you for inviting me. I'm, I'm, I'm honored. I'm honored to do it. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Um, so we we have we invited some thought leaders from various sectors, from the uh, economic development sector, um, bankers, um, business owners, and we also invited um, folks from the judicial system, um, whether they are lawyers or police officers, and we also invited um, folks from um, the political spectrum all across from Democrats, Republicans, and independents. And we want to hear their truth. And the students and those who will be attending will be active participants. We will also uh, instruct what is the science of dialogue. So everyone knows the framework and the rules of what we're trying to achieve with dialogue. It's not a debate. It's not, uh, an, you know, someone trying to just win you over to their ideologies. We just want to hear what is your truth about what's going on? And then we want to be able to draw some conclusions that as a group to say we can move forward with that particular uh, idea in that area. So we have these thought leaders. And um, like I said, it ranges from uh, of, of just a whole spectrum. Mm -hmm. um, and so those, those are the folks we're going to be going. Then we have breakout groups where the students and those who are from the community as well can engage and have dialogue among them. And then I'll save the big surprise, the cherry on top, for later in this conversation as we go further. <laughs> you know, uh, the way that this, this conference is being set up, is it's not just people talking at you, but one thing I like about what, what you guys have done, Tim and, and, and your brother, uh, you guys have set it up to where individuals can talk back. And not just talk back, but we can talk together because it's all about in order to make us come to a, a, an action plan to solve a problem. You know, so many times we get talked at and we don't get a chance to talk to and persons don't get a chance to listen. So, you know, this opportunity, mm -hmm. I think, is a great opportunity, not just for what the foundation is doing and for the future, but for the people that are attending. Yes. Yes. You know, Absolutely. Tim. 
talk, talk to us a little bit about the people who that uh, you plan to attend, and then I'm going to ask you to talk about that cherry on top. <laughs> okay. Okay, sure. Um, as I said, we have the thought leaders from various sectors, and I want to I want to emphasize this sector because earlier I talked about an ecosystem, mm-hmm. and the imagination of communities are either held by three very important social sectors, and that is the political sector, the economic sector, and the policing sector, uh, and they are basically the three pillars that that basically hold forth or make sure that the imagination of the people is sustainable. And so we we, rep, we ask representatives from those three sectors to be there to kind of give us a lay of their perspective, their vision, their truth, and allow the audience to then also ask questions about those things and, and look at what, what they believe is some flaws in those areas or what we can do to make it better. And so we want to be able to, to, to engage the students with from their perspective and let hear their stories and their truths in the and their engagement in these three areas. Hmm. I hope I answered your question. No, absolutely, absolutely. You know, so you're you're looking not just thought leaders but also students, uh, like you said, the the young folk, the young people, because they are really really engaged and pushing. I tell you what. You know, I I wasn't alive in the '60s and saw the revolution and the movement and the great movements that we have, but. These moves we started doing BLM matter the uh, time. I'm telling you, they've really pushed ahead, and and yeah. these these type of symposiums, these type of gatherings, really help to galvanize and bring their energy uh, together so that they can put mm-hmm. forth uh, just 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 a just a cohesive uh, collective uh, uh, push in order to make change in their community. Tim, tell us about the cherry on top. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, now this this particular uh, dialogue session is also going to bring data analytics involved. Mm. And uh, data analytics is basically taking the world by storm. And what I mean by that is that people are using data and they're being able to blend that data using technology and analytics to actually help do predictions on what are the best path forward. So uh, I actually work for a data analytics company, a data science, and it's called Altrix, A-L-T-R-Y-X. They're one of the, the world's leaders in data analytics. And I told them the story about Donovan, and they wanted to be a part of this. So what they have decided to do is to basically train any student that that attends the, the workshop. I mean, I'm sorry. That attends the reimagine. I'm sorry. Let me rephrase it. That attends the reimagine uh, dialogue sessions we're having at NSU. They will train those students in data analytics mm-hmm. using their designer. That is huge. Why is that huge? Uh, because that basically having the training and possible certification in data science and data analytics opens up so many doors across the globe. And so they agreed to uh, allow the students to download their software for free, which costs tens of thousands of dollars. That's one. (laughs) And then then they were trained students on how to take what we're doing in the dialogue session and using dynamic information from the community in these sectors and do some modeling on some of the best paths forward to solve these critical complex problems. And for those students who are engaging and who want to go further, there will be possible internships for them. And the intern applications don't even open up to October. So this is perfect timing for our students at NSU to get engaged. I will just give you this one little story right here. I had an intern this past summer. He didn't have any technical background. He was a business major. He was he worked directly with me and he worked remote. <laughs> I want the kids <laughs> to know that. <laughs> I had an intern. I'm in Texas. He's in California. Yeah. He did a <laughs> phenomenal job. We trained him on software. He did predictive analysis on gun control wow. and how to mitigate gun violence. Okay? He won the contest that 
Altrix did for their global, because they're in, Altrix is in 500 colonies in 39 countries. Mm. He won the contest. And before he left to finish his senior year, they gave him a job offer. Wow. And he signed it. So when he graduates in May, he's going to come. He said, I'll see you guys in July. That's when his official date starts with us. And his salary is pretty good coming out of college. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen. I, I really want to hone, hone in on the students at NSU that you don't have to have the technical background. You just have to have the passion. And you have to have the, the, the inquisitiveness to want to be able to take on this data analytics that's taking the world um, by storm right now. This is Stay the Water. I'm your host, Dr. Eric Laville, and we are delving into the phenomenal work of the Donovan Wayne Lynch Foundation, turning tragedy into triumph. Here on the campus of Norfolk State University this Saturday, September 10th, from 12 p.m., 12 noon to 3 p.m., you'll have a chance to come to this discussion. Let's talk about it. A dialogue about policing economics and social justice and social justice and social